Steve Dotto here and welcome to the next installment of building your YouTube channel to 100,000 subscribers. Today I want to talk about a little bit about the marketing side of building your channel and that is keeping our eye on the prize. We've talked earlier about the number of subscribers we have and tracking the number of subscribers and using the statistics to see our increase and decrease. But let's take a step back and think for a second about what a subscriber represents in YouTube and other ways that we might be able to engage with that individual. Now, depending on your own business model, you probably aren't just looking at YouTube as a revenue source. Uh, typically speaking, if you're in internet marketing, one of the keys that you have is building a mail list that where mail lists are still the most valuable business asset for, for online marketers because it's the only way that we can reach out and ask you for business or ask people for business. So building a mail list is still one of kind of the core principles that many of us uh, adhere to. So here's the challenge that we have with YouTube. We're building our brand on YouTube. We're trying to get subscribers on YouTube and we're having success in growing. So we're getting all excited, but we have good access to those subscribers on YouTube, but not phenomenal access to those subscribers on YouTube. We can't create a, an email directly to them. We have to hope that they remain subscribed and that they see whatever uh, content that YouTube deems appropriate as far as informing them of our videos. And it does a pretty good job. When we publish a new video, we get an opportunity right away to reach out and tell everybody about it. And, and depending on how you have your email set up, the sort of digest that you get from YouTube will inform you of all the different emails that you're subscribed to. But many people are subscribed to lots of different channels. So we're just kind of there in the mix. Subscribers are really valuable, don't get me wrong, but there are ways if we can convert those subscribers into, there are other channels that we might wanna move them into where we can have a more solid relationship with them. And for me, that means getting people onto my newsletter list where I can reach out and talk to them directly and personally. So that is a kind of a multi-step process to migrate people up from subscriber over to, over to uh, email subscriber, from YouTube subscriber to email subscriber. And you don't wanna disenfranchise the people. You don't wanna make them feel like they're a piece of meat that you're trying to move across. So it has to be done subtly. And, and to be honest, I'm thrilled with the relationship that I'm engaging with with my subscribers. I love the fact that we can have a dialogue in the community area. And I'm really enjoying this, this communion that's happening uh, with subscribers and myself. Uh, but I still would prefer to find a way to get you into my newsletter list so that, uh, so that ultimately I, I, I have that much greater level of contact with you. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing that I, we do is we consider whether or not we want everybody to see our videos on YouTube. Now it's great to see the video, it's great to have the traffic go to YouTube, but it's better if we can have them view our videos, our YouTube videos in our own property. So my first order of business after I publish a video is to create a blog post with that video. And I make it very, very simple. Videos are my form of blogging. They're my chosen blog uh, technology. So I, in the completion of the video, I have, for all intents and purposes, completed my blog for that particular day. So I'm ready to post it. So what I do is I go in and I take the video. So I'm just going to look at the last video that we just posted here before this one here. I'm going to pause it so it doesn't blow us out as far as the sound goes. There we go. I'm just going to pause it there. Sorry, Ad. No, you're not going to see our good Ad. I'm, who's Oh, BC Hydro. I live in Vancouver. It's a local ad running. Great. Okay. But I digress. I take this, this, uh, the URL, the YouTube URL, and it doesn't really matter whether you copy it here or you copy the shortened URL down in the share, in the share area here where you choose it. They both seem to work just fine as far as I'm concerned. I don't know if there's a difference. If you know of a difference, let me know. But at any rate, I copy that and then I go over into my WordPress account. Now this is my website here, and this is my WordPress site. Now I've got my WordPress set up, uh, my site set up so that I've got uh, you know promotions for different events that I'm doing, and then my videos go on the main page in uh, in, in an order of uh, product demos followed by the 10 uh, 100k subscribers followed by uh, another uh, another vlog that I produce. So these are all different post types. So what I do once I copy that across is I create a new post. So I go into the post and I can actually do it from the plus menu up here. I, I create a new post. 
that new post is going to be in the category. And let's wait till it resolves. Come on, server. Speed it up. There we go. So I name the post. I go over here into the publishing area on the side. And I choose, I make sure I do this early on so that I don't forget it. I choose what category it's going to be in. In this particular case, that was, a, as this video will be, it's 100K subscribers. I do that. And then I, I actually have multiple themes running in my WordPress install. I'm sure that there are lots of WordPress mavens out there who are going to look at how I have my WordPress set up and go, Steve, what the heck are you doing? You're just asking for trouble. But it doesn't seem to be causing me trouble so far. It seems to be working fine. So, but here's the different themes that I have. I use a Canadian company called uh, Themify for my basic theme. So I use their theme and they because they've got this really nice WYSIWYG interface that called the Themify Builder right here that allows me to custom build my pages and my posts really easily and I like that. Uh, but I also use Optimize Press for squeeze pages and for membership stuff. Uh, so I've got these two themes running and they seem to cohabitate quite nicely. Now, if I ever do have a technical support problem, I might have a nightmare. Oh, it's their fault. No, it's their fault. No, it's their fault. I might have that sort of a conversation with the two technical, uh, technical support people, but I haven't to this point. So here's my system. I add an element. These buttons here, this add element, that's coming from my Optimize Press plugin. When I click add element, it brings up an optimized press asset list, which allows me to choose a video player. I just like doing it this way. I can do it. You can do it other ways. You can embed the video in the post uh, manually. You can, you can add it as a media type. You can do all sorts of different ways. I like doing it this way because I choose the media player. All I do is choose the type being a YouTube player, paste in the URL, boom, and then say insert and the video is ready to play. It's done the insert. And I don't even have to go into the HTML editor. I can do it right in the visual editor. As a matter of fact, and it's, and it's not really editable. It's not like it's a WYSIWYG interface for the whole thing. It just basically puts the code there. Then what I do is I insert a, a more button because I only want the video to appear on my landing page. So it's set up that way. And then I use my I use a keyboard, I use a, a macro coming out of Text Expander to put an opt in box for my newsletter. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to be promoting all of my videos in my blog post more than on YouTube. If you ask me where to go see my video, I'm going to give you the URL of this blog post, not the URL of the post on the YouTube page. I want the traffic to come to my Dotto Tech site not to come to the YouTube site because at YouTube, they will be recommended to go and see other videos and other things. At my site, I recommend you to sign up for my newsletter and watch my other videos and be engaged in processes that I am interested in. It's not that I'm not interested in the YouTube stuff. It's just that I have a better chance of making money if you're engaged in my stuff. So it just makes sense to try and get you to come to my house instead of spending all your time in YouTube's house. Make sense? So what I do is I put in the opt-in page and I've just created a little, uh, a little keyboard shortcut called uh, opt-in and there it is. So it puts in all the detail I need for that to be an opt-in page. So if I preview this right now, what we'll see happen is it will come up and I'll see the video and I'll see the opt-in box right underneath it. And that is basically my blog post. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of extra text of some links that I might have within the video, but I don't go to town on it. I, I basically keep it pretty simple uh, so because I've done my work recording the demo. I don't have to spend a lot of time now writing a big long post attached to it. Now, one caveat is I do want the text of this video to be a part of the post. So it then goes into my system where I have a transcriber who transcribes all of my videos. And once she's completed with that, she puts it in my Dropbox folder. I'll come back into this post and I will paste the text, the transcript of the post on the second page on another page down below. But that's, that, that's uh, kind of down the road. Plus I do little things like I add a graphic to this so that when we go into the, uh, into one, th this menu here, for example, I'll just open that in a new tab so we don't lose that tab. So that we go in here, so I, I add I add a thumbnail images or cover art to it or a featured image they call it, so that you can see I've got the nice featured images of all of the uh, of all of the different videos that I post and that sort of stuff. I dress it up in WordPress, but that's WordPress tips. And right now we're talking about YouTube tips, so I'm not going to spend too much time showing you the WordPress tips. But I'm not finished yet. So I've created the post in YouTube. Oh, sorry, on my blog. And now it's there. 
And when I send out my newsletter, I will create a link to this location for you to see it. But now I want to create a little more traffic to this site. I want to drive people to it. So how do I do that? That's where the third part of my process comes in is I take now this page, I take whatever, and I'll just choose this YouTube analytics page from that one because I'm not actually going to save the post that I just created. So this is the, uh, the video that we just created. I put this, I copied the URL from the blog post page. Are you following me? And I go to our friend and everybody's friend, our favorite site on the whole planet, not Facebook. And I go into Facebook and in Facebook, I go into my brand page from my personal page. And there I create a page post with the video in it. So here's uh, here's the post that I created for my video from last week. And if you take a look through my brand page, you'll see all of the different posts from all of the different videos that I created. So I create this, meaning that if we click on this, where are we taken to? We're taken back to the our website, not to YouTube to view the video. Now there are a couple of ways to do this slightly differently. This is basically the low hanging fruit way. This is the easiest way, but increasingly we're finding tools that allow us to play YouTube videos on Facebook and still add our brand or still request people to, to sign up for our newsletter. That creates some different options for us. And we're going to certainly explore those sometime down the line, but this I would consider to be a basic, simple process that assures that you're connecting with your fans in the most preferable scenario for you, not for YouTube, but for you. So we create the post, we create the video on YouTube. We post it to YouTube. It's shared with our YouTube fans. All is great. All is good, but that's just the beginning of the journey. That's not the end of the story. We take that video, we cross post it into our own personal blog. Now we create value in our blog. We create search engine juice and we can create extra traffic to our site. We create extra credibility and we have the opportunity to engage with the audience as they come. We can invite them to sign up for our newsletter or to participate in other events that we have control of on our website. And then to increase the traffic, we then go to Facebook, which is the greatest traffic generator that we have today and we cross post the video there. We create interest there. When people click on the video there and want to watch it in Facebook, they're brought back to that blog post again. They're brought into our house where we can welcome them, invite them to sign up for our newsletter and invite them to engage in a deeper and more meaningful relationship with us. That's it. That was a longer story than I thought it was going to be when I started telling this tale today. Uh, I hope you found this video to be useful and stayed with us right to the end. Uh, if you haven't done it by now, I encourage you strongly to subscribe to our newsletter. And while you're at it, give us a like. If you've subscribed, give us a like. Don't forget to give us a like. We could use the social juice. And please comment below. I love the dialogue that's happening with, uh, with you folks and with myself around YouTube publishing. We're starting to build a little bit of a community here and I find that really exciting. So please post your comments below, post your corrections, your ideas, your thoughts. Uh, I don't, as I say, this stuff is not, uh, there's nothing uh, locked in stone as far as YouTube publishing and building a YouTube channel. It's a voyage of discovery that we're all on together and I'm so glad you're on it with me. I'm Steve Dotto. Thanks for spending time with me today.